Welcome to the Six Sigma Institute of Cebu's Lean Six Sigma Training and Certification Course. Since its development at Motorola in 1986, Six Sigma has become a global phenomenon. Companies and individuals are using Six Sigma methodologies to improve operational efficiencies and to change their outlook on life and the way that they make decisions. Six Sigma certification is a great way to improve your capabilities as a leader. In many organizations, being promoted is still an overly politicized task. With so many people moving up in a company simply because of who they know and not because of what they know. A Six Sigma certification tells the decision makers that you now possess the skills that they would still need to teach your competition if they promoted them instead of you. Six Sigma should become part of your daily decision-making process. The concept of reducing waste, defects, and errors, whether in your professional or personal life, should become a part of who you are. This course was created to provide you with the skills and tools needed to improve just about any process. My name is Nicholas Clark and I am a certified Lean Six Sigma Black Belt. I am also a published author and I have written 14 self-help books on personal and professional development. I was first introduced to Six Sigma by happenstance while working at a call center that handled Amazon's telephone customer support. Amazon has their highest call volume in December, which starts with Prime Day. I ended up the month with more than 240 surveys returned and with a 99.87% approval rating. We were expected to handle about 5,000 calls per month and an average of two minutes per call. So having nearly 5% of the customers responding to the survey was unheard of. The number two person at our site had a little over 100 surveys returned and only a 96.27% approval rate. The operations executive for the site wants to know if I could create a program to help others perform the same way. And so I was handed my first project. I just did not know that it was a Six Sigma project until more than a year later when I signed up for an overpriced online certification course. I created the Six Sigma Institute of Cebu, or Cebu 6, in 2020, during the height of the pandemic. Being stuck in quarantine for a year can be quite boring, so I decided that I would share Six Sigma with the world by creating an affordable online live training and certification course. At first, I simply created a website. Then I added a learning management system to it. And I began creating videos, which we started posting to our YouTube channel in June. All the while, I was developing a 40-hour Lean Six Sigma Green Belt training and certification course. I spent months totally focused on creating the course. And in September, this course was accredited by the Council for Six Sigma Certification. Today, we are one of only six accredited training and certification providers in the entire Philippines and the only one in the Central Visayas. This is a dual certification program that provides the same level of training provided by the Ateneo de Manila University Center for Continuing Education. So what is a dual certification course? Well, because we have integrated Lean and Six Sigma into the same program, at each level of training, we offer our passing students a certificate for both Six Sigma as well as Lean Six Sigma. Our white belt certification course is about six hours long, and those who pass the 30 question exam will receive their Six Sigma white belt and their Lean Six Sigma white belt certification. The yellow belt course is 20 hours long, and includes the white belt course. So those who pass the 30 question white belt and the 60 question yellow belt exams will receive four certificates, Six Sigma and Lean Six Sigma white and yellow belt certificates. Our green belt course is 40 hours long and includes both the white and yellow belt courses. 
So anyone who passes all the exams, including the 120 question green belt exam, will receive a total of six certificates. For those who are okay with a self-paced program, the yellow and green belt courses are available at a discount. As part of the requirements for accreditation, we follow the Council for Six Sigma Body of Knowledge, which has been published and is available to download for free from our course description section, as well as from the Council's website. Our introductory white belt course takes about six hours to complete and covers the first three chapters of the book. We answer the question, what is Six Sigma, and discuss the common principles and challenges that go into the decision-making process. We will cover the history of Six Sigma, its application, and discuss its development starting with Walter Schuart in the 1920s, through the Japanese post-war economic miracle, and into the quality crisis of the late 70s and early 80s. We will also cover other process improvement methods and programs that have been created and used over the years, and discuss when it is best to use Six Sigma to improve a process. We will finish off with a review of the information covered along with a 30 question certification exam. Those who signed up for the yellow belt and green belt courses will continue on after the white belt certification exam. The yellow belt course covers chapters four through 11 of the council's book. And we will begin by covering lean concepts and discussing the various forms of waste and several lean tools that you can start using in the workplace right away. We will cover the basic Six Sigma concepts and discuss standard deviation, the Pareto principle, the voice of the customer, and even basic metrics. We will also cover the approach to a problem and discuss the five wise tool for finding the root cause to any problem. We will answer the question, what is a process? And discuss the major components of a process, who the process owner is, the different types of data that can be collected from a process, as well as how to map out the process using a SIPUC diagram. Keep in mind that the yellow belt is still an entry level certification. So many of the topics we will cover are basic and rudimentary. Nevertheless, they are important to the overall understanding of the Six Sigma process, which is why we will go on to cover quality and discuss critical to quality characteristics and the cost of poor quality. We will cover how to select the right Six Sigma projects, building on from our white belt training, and discuss the selection process and determining how many projects can be conducted at a single time. We will cover basic Six Sigma team management in our yellow belt training, but we'll build on that later during the green belt training. We will discuss the process of building a team, delegating tasks, scheduling meetings and project timelines, as well as some aspects of budgeting. Then we will move on to an introduction to the DMAC and DMADV process, which we will build on in more depth in our green belt training. We will discuss all of the phases and how the two methods differ from one another. After we have completed our introduction to the DMAC and DMADV methodologies, and covered what occurs in each of the phases. We will then review everything that we have covered in the Yellow Belt training. We will cover all of the Council for Six Sigma Certification's body of knowledge that is included in chapters four through 11 of their book. There will be a lot to review, so it has been split up into two parts. Once we have completed the review, you will be able to take the 60 question certification exam. For those who signed up for the Green Belt training course, we will move on to an in-depth discussion of each of the phases in the DMAC methodology, building on what we learned in the Yellow Belt training course. The Green Belt course will cover chapters 12 through 24 of the Council's book. We will cover the define phase and discuss the process of creating a project charter, project ground rules, and various tools that you may use during the define phase. From there, we will cover the measure phase and discuss the failure mode and effect analysis the collection of data and testing the accuracy of the data and measurement systems. We will cover the analyze phase and discuss how to conduct a root cause analysis, a graphical analysis, as well as a statistical analysis of the data collected during the measurement phase. 
Then we will cover the improve phase and discuss the solution selection, the conducting of a cost-benefit analysis, and the piloting of a solution as well as the implementation planning. We will move on to cover the control phase and discuss the importance of revising the risk priority numbers in a failure mode and effect analysis, as well as the creation of a control plan and the creation of various statistical process control charts, the implementation of visual management, and celebrating the success of the project. We will also go into more depth with graphical analysis, building on what we learned in our Yellow Belt training and create our very first control chart using only Excel. We will cover the normal probability distributions and discuss the creation of a histogram in Excel. We will then cover the correlation and regression analysis and discuss the differences between correlation and linear regression in Six Sigma. Since we already covered normal probability distributions, we will then need to cover non-normal probability distributions, where we will discuss the various distributions used with both continuous as well as discrete data. We will also cover the all-important topic of hypothesis testing and discuss the basics of testing, how to select the right test, how to conduct tests appropriately, to ensure that we can draw valid conclusions about the process population. We will need to cover sample size, where we will discuss hypothesis testing errors, preventing them with the right sample size, as well as how to calculate and analyze the sample size. While we briefly covered control charts before this point, we will need to take a deeper look at control charts, where we will discuss the most common types of control charts and their uses, as well as how to create and read control charts using the eight Nelson rules. Finally, we will cover the application of statistics to the business through Six Sigma. We will discuss the common challenges associated with presenting statistical analysis, why we still need to include some statistics in your presentations, as well as various tips for creating business-friendly presentations. After covering all of the Council for Six Sigma certifications body of knowledge contained within the first 24 chapters of the book, we will review that information. To make the review process easier, we have split it into three parts. After that, you will be able to take the 120 question Green Belt Certification Exam and obtain both your Six Sigma and Lean Six Sigma Green Belt Certifications. Now let's talk about the testing protocols. The White Belt course consists of three modules. After completing module three, you will be eligible to take the 30 question exam, which of course is timed. You will only have one hour to complete the exam, and any questions left unanswered will be marked as incorrect. The Yellow Belt course consists of eight modules, plus the three White Belt modules. You will have a 60-question exam at the end of the course. You will only have two hours to complete that exam. There are 13 modules in the Green Belt course, plus the eight Yellow Belt modules and the three White Belt modules, a total of 24 modules. There is a five question quiz at the end of each module. These are not pass or fail, but are there to help you retain what you learn. And then there is a 120 question exam at the end of the course. You will only have three hours to complete the final exam and any question left unanswered will be marked as incorrect. Quizzes cannot be retaken, but exams can be retaken three times. You may challenge questions there will be an option on each individual question to challenge it. While these quizzes and exams are open book, meaning that you can refer to the book when you are taking them, in order to prevent cheating, the questions will not come verbatim from the book. You will have to pay attention to the presentation and discussions for the answers. There are 120 banks of questions, and there are a minimum of five questions in each bank. Some banks have more than 10 questions in them. Quizzes and exams are automatically generated by the system, and the questions are randomly drawn from the question pool. As a result, no two quizzes or exams will be the same. If the system detects any form of cheating, it will alert us so we can investigate. 
If it is determined that you cheated, your certificate will be invalidated by the system. If anyone checks it, and you will need to retake the exam to be issued a new certificate and certificate ID. Certificate IDs can be verified on our website. Six Sigma was created by Motorola in the mid-1980s, and after its success within the organization, Bob Gavin, the then CEO of Motorola, gave Six Sigma to the world. Michael Harry wrote the first Six Sigma book of knowledge in the 1990s and even opened the first training academy outside of Motorola. However, because the methodology was placed into the public forum by its creator, there is no centralized certifying authority. There are, however, three world-recognized accreditation providers for Six Sigma certification, which includes the American Standards for Quality, or ASQ, the International Association for Six Sigma Certification, or IASSC, and the Council for Six Sigma Certification, or CSSC. ASQ certification outside of the United States is difficult in most countries and can be costly. An International Association for Six Sigma Accreditation Certificate is also very expensive to obtain. We follow the Council for Six Sigma Certification's body of knowledge since it is openly available to the public. We maintain records of all students who take our courses and pass our exams, as well as their scores, the number of times an exam has been retaken, and the dates of all retakes. Each certificate is issued a unique certificate ID, which is then assigned to the student and may be referenced by anyone at any time through our certificate validation system. This also allows you to reprint certificates at a later date if you lose the originals and as an assurance that anyone who attempts to verify your participation in the training course will be provided with, at the very least, the day of the passing exam and the name of the person who passed the exam. We also take data privacy very important, and beyond the verification of issued certificates, we will not provide anyone outside of legal channels access to personally identifiable information of our students and enrollees. This is the point where everyone wants to see a guarantee. They want a guarantee that a Six Sigma certification will result in an increase in pay and an improvement in job opportunities. Unfortunately, no one can guarantee this. Your pay is based on the position and the competition for that position within your industry. If you are a call center agent and you obtain a Six Sigma certification, then you are an agent with a Six Sigma certification. How you use it will determine whether you can seek promotions within your organization or switch to another organization, as will certificate acceptance. Some companies will accept it, but others will insist that they will only accept an ASQ or an IASSC certificate. Ultimately, it comes down to how you use what we teach you in this course. The information provided can improve your outlook in life and help you understand the decisions made by leadership within your organization. And, if used wisely, a certificate can make the difference when leadership is selecting someone for an internal position.